Yo, 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 what's up, family? We back. We back. And trust me when I tell you, this is another banger. I will not disappoint. But I'm not going to talk your heads off on this one, guys. We're going to get right to the action. I'm about to introduce y'all to the man of the hour. Let's get it. Yo. What's going on, bro? What's good, baby? What's going on? We made it, man. Yeah, we did. Sheesh. Right. Time flies, though. Yeah, it does. Because when we talked, it was a while ago. Yeah. But today is the day. Yeah, man. I made my appointment, you know? Yes, sir. I got you here. Yes, sir. Here, I man. appreciate that, yeah. man. So now that we're here, let the people know what's your name, what city, what state right. you represent. And if you're down with any teams, you yeah. can let them know that, too. So my name is Angelo. Um, I live in Highland Park, New Jersey. Um, and I'm not associated with any particular teams, but there's just so many people in my life who you know, help me build the car, help me give you advice, right? Mm. Just supported me along the way. I got, I'm on God's team, so you know I gotta thank God. Facts. You know what I'm so he going all the way. That's Trust it. that. I'm covering all the bases. Facts. If he on God's team, guys, ain't no stopping. For real, for real. That's right. So now, Angela, what's the year making model of the car we're gonna right. see? So this is a 1985 Ford Thunderbird. I put 30th anniversary edition in there too. Yikes! Hold on, hold right. on. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Angela. What anniversary is it? 30th anniversary. 30th, y'all. Yeah. Stay tuned. I'm That's telling right. you, I swear, I will not disappoint. 30th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And what year is this again? 1985. <laughs> Take note. So now. Whew. That's a lot, bro. I didn't yeah. know it was the anniversary. Yeah, no, I can't give you everything at once. <laughs> exactly, I see that. I'm gonna drop little things here and there. I see pay that. Y'all gotta pay attention for real, guys. This is different, right? Yeah. Here. So, 1985, and you said it's the Thunderbird. It's a Thunderbird, man. Okay, okay. What made you get that though? What are you What are you doing with so, an 85 Thunderbird? That's what people ask, right? That's one of the questions. You know, you don't normally see. I'm 20 years old now, so you don't normally see 20 year olds rolling around in 85. Definitely right? not. Let alone Thunderbirds. I have not seen another one of these on the road the whole time I've been alive. At least I don't know about you. Listen, I'm a little older. Yeah. However, you don't see these on the road today. Right. I remember them back in the days, yeah. but now, especially not the way as clean as yours is, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. So what are you doing with that, so, bro? So my father, he bought this in 1985, brand new from the Ford Jeez. factory. I, I heard a story. Him and his brother, they went there. You know, with money in hand, all cash, right? They yeah. wanted this car. He knew what he was getting, and he bought this exact car in 1985, brand new. Um, back then, it was a different color, all them things. Uh -huh. And he used it all the time, daily driver, right? He would take it to church, to groceries, he yeah. would go do all his errands and all that. Because um, he had a work truck, so this was kind of his other car. Okay. Um, and he would drive this like we do regular cars, right? Yeah. And he... um. He parked it in my driveway one time and he started to get not feel so well. He had ALS, right? Okay. So he's since passed away. Okay. Um, okay. So it sat in my driveway for about 11 years or so. Wow. Um, and as a kid, I would walk right past it, right? Had a cover over it. I thought it was cool, but, yeah. you know, I would walk right past it. My brother and I, we would actually jump on this thing because we would just sit <laughs> on our driveway. Right, it was right, like right. Our, our jungle gym, you know? Yeah. And um, it, it would just sit there. And then when I turned 17, my mom was like, you know what? Maybe it's time that we fix it up because we kept it all these years. Mm. And I was like, that sounds like a great plan. Because at that time, I had a little knowledge engine. Okay. And I knew what was in it. And I knew what could be done. Mm. I was like, you know what? That's a great idea. And what 17-year-old don't want a car? Right? Exactly. So we spent the money to take it to a mechanic to get it fixed up. Uh -huh. um, they did everything they needed to do to get it on the road and brakes working and all these kinds of things. Okay. Because um, the car hardly had any rust on it, right? It sat, right? It sat. Yeah. Um, and that's what really preserved it. Because most of these cars were Was beaten up. Was it in up. the garage? No, just in the driveway, cover the over driveway. it. Oh, cover yeah, over it. Cover okay, over it. okay. Yeah. And it wasn't really started up that often. We probably should have. We didn't take great care of it because we didn't really know what we had. It was just sitting there. Right. Um, and we had taken the car um, to the mechanic shop, mm -hmm. came back. I was like in heaven, you know. Mm -hmm. I was like, I got a car, you know. It's brand, like basically brand new, works yeah. great, right? Starts up every time, you know. Yeah. And then it got to the point where I was like, I don't really like how it looks. You okay. Know? I think it's a little slow, right? I, I, I started thinking like that. Yeah. So I went on YouTube, like we do. Yeah. You know, I was like, what can I do to this car? And from there, boom, boom, project, 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 modification, modification, right? You was on a roll. Yeah. So what I would call this car is almost like a, a resto mod in, in some ways, right? A resto. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Like a restoration modification. Mixed in. Yeah. 
Speaking of restoration modification, matter of fact, before we even go to where my mind is going, mm -hmm. I gotta ask you this too. Because yeah. like you said, it kept going and going and going and going. Part of my channel, the reason why I named it Regular Guys yeah. slash girls, I don't like to leave the ladies out, right? Is because I only deal with regular guys. We're all regular guys. That's We're not true. the billionaire boys mm -hmm. club. We are not the A-list celebrities or anything like that. But um, part of my, my whole mind, my whole frame of mind, mm -hmm. putting this channel together is I want to inspire people. Right. I want to motivate people. And you're definitely an inspiration. I'm going to tell yeah. you that off the Thank rip. You. 20 years old. Yep. This is crazy. 20 years old, you're inspiring a lot of people with what you're about to show them. I got I to gotta ask you. What do you do for a living? Or was this funded by mom? Or yeah. how, how did you so get your car where it is? I credit the, the first kind of bit of money thrown at it when it first got fixed up, when we took it to the mechanic uh -huh. to get it on the road. That was all my mom. She just did that because she did that for me, right? I was turning 17, kind of nice. birthday present, you know, and I, I got to give her all that. But every dollar spent on it since then has been, you know, my money. Sheesh. Right? Um, like she said, you know, anything you want to do outside of like, getting it running that's on that's you, on you I now like, i'm fine with that right okay so you know i put the, the tires on it put everything on it that you know looks nice right um and see it in a minute i don't want to spoil too much <laughs> exactly uh, but yeah, all that money is for me and you know to sustain that you know i had saved up a little bit from the kid birthdays and whatnot mm. but i was like you know money goes quick so i got right, what am i gonna do so right next thing happens i get a job actually that's where we're at right now i work right over here so voila <laughs> that's know, what you do for a living. what i do during the days at least most days is uh construction right okay. i do um property maintenance landscaping okay um and then i, I work for my my family members my neighbors i do you know, lawns i do um my uncle has an appliance um appliance store appliance, or like a I, he fix fixes appliances, ah. um, so he does that. So I work with him sometimes, and nice. all these things, you know, it just adds up, right? And I'm grateful for all those Sheesh. opportunities to make money like that. Yeah. So you're a grinder overall. Yeah, I do try to. You, be. you drive, bro, yeah. and I, yo, that's my hat. If I had a hat on, <laughs> I would tip my hat to you for Appreciate real, for that. real. Again, that's that's inspirational to a lot of our viewers that's watching, especially the younger ones. Yeah. That's thinking that I would love a certain type of car. X, Y, and Z, but how am I going to get the money? Right. You got to grind. You got to use your skills. Yeah. You got to be willing to put in the work. Right. Now, speaking of putting in the work, mm -hmm. you ready to show the people this car? Let's do it, man. That's why we're here. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sheesh, guys. Mm -hmm. Bang, bang, bang. Look at this here right here, guys. Clean. I swear to you, this is clean with a capital C right here. Man, Angela, where do we begin now? My eyes go straight, now we're talking exterior, right? Okay. My eyes go straight to this paint. It's so clean. Talk about it. Is this original? What color is this? What's going on with the paint? Okay, so I'll start at the color and I'll give you a little backstory on it. Okay. Um, so this is, contrary to what many people think, this is actually not an original color for this car. Not the original no, color? No, not the original color. It is a Ford color though. Okay. So, this is a color that they would have put on different cars that came out of their factories. Mm. Um, it's a little bit darker, right? It's a little more menacing looking, right? A little more um, sporty maybe. Yes. Um, and if you take a closer bit, it's got metallic paint on it. Um, and it. that was a very 80s thing for Ford, right? Definitely. Anything that came out those factories rolled out with metal pieces in the paint. Right? Definitely. Um, so the original color was a medium regatta blue uh -huh. metallic paint, right? Okay. So that was like a little bit how the sky looks today, right? It's kind ah. of more of a baby blue type of thing. Check that out, guys. Um, that's how yeah, it used that's to how look. It used to look right? <laughs> okay. And it had, you can take a look at this, the bumper molding right here. Uh -huh. So this was um, all like a light gray, right around the car. Uh -huh. And it had decals here of kind of gray stripes. Really? Um, okay. Yeah. So that's what it looked like from the factory. And if you type in 1985 Thunderbird 30th mm -hmm. Anniversary Edition, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. 30th Anniversary Edition. Yeah. Okay. Like that's the only color it came in. So that was unique to 30th Anniversary nice. Edition. Right. Got you. Um, and sitting from, yeah, I think it was about 2000, 2009 to 2000, maybe 2020. One or so. Yeah. You know, paint doesn't do well not being taken care of not exactly. being washed so the sun beat that up 
I mean, you had the clear coat stripping. There was rust all over it, you know? Really? Yeah, so it was not in good never shape. Never known looking at this. Yeah. And, you know, when I was 17 rolling around in it, I didn't care. I had wheels, so I didn't really care what That's it looked it. like, right? 17, yo, pushing but through. There comes, there comes a time when you're like, man, this car can look so much better. Right. right. So I said, I got to do something. So I started doing my, a body work on it, right? I took out some of the dents, fixed up some of the rust spots. Um, you did this yeah, or yeah. you got it done? No, I did all the body work on what? it, too. Yeah, I taught myself. That's why some of it don't look as good as it should. I would have never known, yeah, bro. That's first crazy. Time, first time I did body work and it turned out okay. Um, Very nice. My coworker and I, we actually welded in new quarter panels. Um, what? There were massive rust holes all through this Are you lower serious? quarter panel right there. Yep. And we we cut that out. We welded in new ones, and now it looks like just like it did from factory. You know. I would have never yeah. known that. Same thing with the other side too. That's um, crazy. And it, it just needed it. And then slowly, all these things started to come up. When we did the, the rust holes in the back, we did the, some of the dents on the car, yeah. right? And then I was like, all right, now I'm ready to take it for paint. Mm -hmm. So I, I took it for paint. Um, and I was looking, thinking about colors for a long time. Right. I wanted something darker, um, but not, not too dark, not black. But right. I wanted to maintain that blue. I mean, blue. because I have a blue interior, so I said, you can't go you know, red, too. yellow. Right. right. You can't do that. Um, so I said, all right, I want a blue. Looking at Ford colors because I kind of wanted to remain in that, in that classic that kind of deal. Okay. You know? So I found this guy. I was like, oh, I like that. Um, and actually, this is a funny story. It wasn't supposed to be painted this color. The, the, the shop I took it to uh -huh. that was painting the car, they didn't have the color that I wanted, so they painted it this color. And I was really? like, I was like looking at it, and I was like, something's wrong. And they were like, yeah, we painted a different color. I was like, oh, snap. I was like, I wasn't mad about it. <laughs> but I was like, oh, snap. What's you know? the odds? So you yeah. didn't ask for this color? No, I asked for something very close to this. Okay. It was actually, I think, supposed to be a little lighter. Okay. Actually. Um, That's crazy. But this is still a Ford color. This color is... And this is actually smacking. what you call dark medi dark regatta blue metallic. So dark the, the, regatta blue. The one I had before was medium regatta blue. Okay, so, so you, this is you in that stay same very category, close right. to the original exactly. color. Okay. Exactly. And I, th nice. I just think it adds a little pop to it, makes it look a little more racy, a little more sporty. The color itself, color makes, right? It makes the, the chrome and the headlights pop a little bit, nice. you know. Um, it's just something you don't see rolling down the street very often. Definitely not. Um, so that's the story of the paint and the body work right there. Let's talk wheels. What's going on with these wheels? So these are factory wheels, actually. These were the option that were on some of the Mustangs of the same year. Uh -huh. These are kind of the performance wheels, 1985. 85 performance. Yeah. <laughs> right. Guys. But, I mean, sometimes doesn't mean much today. Right. But back in the day, these were the hot wheels, you know? Good, so yep. the, good rich. The yeah. wheel is, is 15, or the top, yeah, the wheel is 15 by 7. Uh -huh. um, and these are BF Goodrich radial tires. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the white letters make that paint pop even more. Definitely. You know? Kind of adds a little bit of a sporty look to it. Definitely um, gives it that muscly look. And what's different about these wheels versus the wheels that we put on the Mustangs and other performance models that Ford uh -huh. put out is these have the Thunderbird hubcap on them. Ah. So the other hubcaps you might see, other hubcaps you might see say Ford or they just don't have an emblem on them. But these are the Thunderbird It actually hubcaps. has the, the right. symbol. Right. Of the Thunderbird. And that's the same symbol that's on my uh, quarter panel back here. It's on my grill up front. Guys, check it out. He th he got the Thunderbird. So, and it comes stock with this Thunderbird. Now, let me ask you, mm -hmm. is it because it's the anniversary edition that they came with these Thunderbird wheels and the um, emblems on the corner panel or all the Thunderbirds back then came like All the Thunderbird models had different wheels. <laughs> That. <laughs> he beats it. Yeah, yeah, that's my co worker over there. You might want to get a shot of him for a little bit. Yeah, he beats it. He's one of my, my mentors, inspirations. Sheesh. He got that thing going. Good. I hear that. Yeah. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. These are the wheels that were on the performance boards. So this was supposed to be their top of the line model for the year, the Thunderbirds. So the other Thunderbirds had different wheels, they had different. Um, tires and all that, uh -huh. um, but this is supposed to be kind of the top of the line deal for the Thunderbirds of that year. Really? Yeah, and okay. this was to the anniversary of the So your yeah. dad wasn't playing back in the No, he wanted he to invest in the rest. Yeah. 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 yeah, he didn't go buying cars every day, so he wanted, you know,
Yeah, that says a lot. Yeah. His dad wasn't playing yeah, in 85. You know, he was a working man too, so he didn't have all that money to put Right. Him. So when he wanted a car, he wanted, you know, what he would actually like. Exactly. Um, yeah, and then I, I, you know, I put these tires on here. Originally, the car came with just, you know, regular black rim tires. Uh-huh. Um, but I was like, you know what, why don't we go for something a little more sporty? So I put the white letters on there. I was trying to make it look a little, a little nicer. Definitely. Definitely make yep. it a lot nicer. And they call these wheels um, 10 hole wheels because you count the holes around here, they're 10 holes. It's really 10. Yep. And that's the Thunderbird, is that the Thunderbird Special Edition wheel from 85? Yeah. That's what came on all of the Special Edition cars. Jeez, 10 hole mm -hmm. wheel, God. Mm -hmm. Peep that. This is nostalgic. Everything about this is nostalgic. So I know you kept everything, not everything, but a lot of things pretty much OEM, right? Right. I gotta ask you about this though. And don't let me skip over anything. If there's anything that I don't uh, touch on. I'll keep track of you, man. You could always be you. like, oh, but what about, let me show you this. Yeah. But let me ask you about this plate. Mm. Cause this plate color, mm. and I'm dating myself with the age here, <laughs> but I remember this yeah. as maybe a, I don't know, a six or a 10 year old or something. Mm -hmm. And this was the color. Yeah. But since then, we went to multiple colors. Right. How'd you get this plate? Yeah. So if you've been in New Jersey for more than a day, you know that most plates, <laughs> you know most cars around here, they got yellow plates, black letters, right? Flat. That's yeah, how it yeah, is, right? That's right. And this, obviously not that. So from 1985 to, I think, maybe 1990, um, it was popular in New Jersey to get the blue plate, right? Yes. And that's the plate that was on the car when it was in my driveway. And that's the plate that I kept on the car because it's it just adds to the you know classic appeal too. Classic. Yeah. Classic. And you know you, you see some cars rolling around with those blue plates, but very rarely. Very rare. Right. And the crazy thing about it, whenever I do see somebody with a blue plate, mm -hmm. that person's over eighty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like no no one's bar. Yeah, the person's yeah. over eighty. Never a twenty year old yeah, driving um, with a yeah. with that blue plate. Yeah. So that's crazy in itself. Mm -hmm. Now, is there anything else you want to touch upon on the exterior? Because oh, I don't want to skip anything. Exterior. But the wheels and the paint and that mm. plate, that, those three things stood out the most. So I'll, I'll go to the front over here. Okay. Tell you a little bit about the lights and the grill. Yes. Um, so these are all the, uh, these are halogen lights. Uh -huh. So cars today, they use LEDs, which are much brighter. Um, but these are straight from 1985, so this is what would have been on the car from factory. Um, and originally, the grill here was the same color as the rest of the body when it was in, coming from the factory. Um, so it was the same kind of baby blue color. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. And it kind of just made it made the car blend in a little too much. I thought it kind mm -hmm. of looked a little too much like the rest of the cars on the road. Right. Um, but I want a little bit of a pop, so I, I went for a. This is actually a wrap. The grilled wrap. So, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Yo, you got you got a lot of little yeah. secret details going um, on that I didn't know about. Yeah. Um, That's and crazy. I, I wanted something a little more in the front to like give it more personality. Yeah. So I, I took this to the guy I know, um, and he, he wrapped it for me. Nice. Which was great. And I wanted something to kind of match the headlights a little bit, so it kind of looks like it's got theme in the front, right? Definitely. Like silver chrome type of deal. Definitely. Um. And, and that's really wow. it for the lights and all. That's wow. Um, I didn't know that was a wrap. And yeah. I didn't know that that wasn't the original, yeah. how it came original. Yeah. So it was all one color before. It was all one color. Yeah, nah, you, you had the right mind yep. to, to switch it up. And I think that's perfect. One other little thing is um, uh -huh. from factory, I told you the, the bumper molding mm -hmm. was like a gray color. Um, but also this little top piece was gray too. And that kind of added to like the, it didn't give it as much personality as it could have had. So. I kind of I chose to paint the bumper molding the same color as the car. Okay. And then I went black with the top part of it. Wow. And I did that myself too. So I painted How did that. you you painted it? Yeah. Why did I painted the top piece right here? Yeah. All black. So I went around the car. And wow. Myself. Yeah. That was a lot of work because I had to take all the molding off the car. That's crazy. I went and I painted it. Yeah. I mean that's just Home Depot spray can. Are you right serious? There. That's it. Yeah. So that's another thing. Regular guys, man. Exactly. You go to Home Depot. Do all that yourself. Figure it out, yeah. baby. We make it work. Yeah. <laughs> But like my coworker said, it's always in the preparation. That's where it gets you. Because you got to sand, you got to prime, and then you, can, you can't just jump in there and paint. Start painting. Right. 
You gotta Dang. do it the right way. You gotta do it the right way. Yeah. I did not know that was painted. And you said with spray paint. Yeah. That's wow, God. Look driveway. at that one more time, that. God. Mm -hmm. He did he did this in his driveway. Turned it black. What was the original color? It was the same color as the bumper, so it was like a light gray. A the light whole piece. gray. Mm -hmm. That's wow. Man, and then I'll, I'll come over here to this side of the car. Uh -huh. um, I'll show you all these moldings here. They used to be chrome. Really? Yeah, or like a silver color. What? I believe. Oh, I'm sorry. It used to be black, but underneath it was chrome. Yeah, they used to be black. So uh -huh. I repainted that myself. This is spray can too. Spray can. Yeah, that was in my my, my house too. <laughs> I did all, it was in all my backyard. I had I had car pieces hanging up all Are over the place. Are you serious? There. Yeah. Isn't it hard to paint outdoors? Oh, it is. I could imagine, because that's gotta, why people get the booths and all the special. Exactly. So you did this outside. Yeah, I, I, wow. I, I kind of crossed my fingers and worked. It worked. Yeah. It worked. It's not perfect, but I don't know what you're going to do. It's like a $100 yeah, yeah. You know, but no, it, it, it does the job, you know. It definitely does yeah. the job. Yeah. I'm impressed. Man, that's so I'm impressed. Thank you. If I wasn't impressed before, now here with all the little <laughs> details, I'm definitely impressed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. I like that sticker you got on there too. Yeah. This is kind of check out the sticker. So the sticker on here I bought online from um, a, a page I follow on YouTube, and it says built not bought, and it's got a picture of a hot rod on there. I love it. And <laughs> you know I'm hoping I pull up somebody, they see the car, they're like, oh snap, it's a nice car, and then they hear it, and they're like, oh snap, that's a nice exactly. car. Exactly. You know, so that's what I'm going for. And then I also was. You know, kind of trying to put out to people that you know everything you see on this car is either done by my hands or you know one of my friends' hands. Mm. Right? So they either taught me or I did it myself. I mean, that's um, where the value comes in. Yeah, for real. That's where it actually, to me, the value of a car goes up when you know yeah. that you put your sweat, your time, your energy into bringing it to this fruition like mm -hmm. that. That's huge. Yeah, that's huge. I agree with you. So now. Ready to show them this clean interior? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Check out the interior, guys. Yeah. Open the door. Sheesh. Mm -hmm. Goodness gracious. So this is, I'll get to it later, but this is essentially like probably 90% from the factory. From the factory? Everything exactly how it was. Sheesh. Clean, clean. Mm-hmm. So this interior, the color was unique to that, again, Thunderbird 30th anniversary. Ah. Right, you didn't find this on any other car. This was like the blue, you know, interior that they had in that exact car. Only the, the anniversary that, yeah. edition had this color. And that's why I'm scared to, you know, rip a seat or mess up some kind of molding because, like, I won't be able to replace that very easily. Exactly. Right. To find a replacement yeah. on that. So, everything in here is wow. pretty delicately taken care of. Right? I see. All the pedals are original too. Um, really? Yeah. It's all original stuff. I gotta ask you this, Angelo. I guess this is more of a kind of leads into a performance situation, but what's the mileage on this thing? The mileage? If you know. I believe roughly. You, you better you might be shocked, but this is a seventy four thousand mile. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you serious? Yeah. Seventy four baby miles mm -hmm. on nineteen eighty five? Yeah. Yeah. No one. I mean, the dad didn't drive it that much. Yeah. Um. Because he had a truck as well. He would drive. Right. So that was probably this. more his daily, right? The truck. Man. But he would he would drive it, you know, and he enjoyed it. But Goodness. he took good care of it, you know. He would do all the work himself, a little bit like me. He would try to take care of it. Yeah. He would, he would do the oil changes, do the tune-ups, right? And he was on top Jeez. of it. He was like, you know, I don't want to spend money and have something right. deteriorate. You know? Super clean. Yeah. Goodness, go back in one more time. Show these people how clean this joint is, man. Yep, and it's got <laughs> bench seats in the back there. Look at the um, bench seats in the back. It's like a couch back there, man. It's I'm a couch you. back there. Yeah. What? It's a nice. couch back there. It's got two cigarette lighters, one of which I've removed since, but uh -huh. you know, people used to smoke all the time in their cars, so it right. came from factories with a cigarette lighter, right? Sheesh. That's nostalgic. Yeah, right. <laughs> Cigarette lighter yeah. in the car. And the one thing the car doesn't have, which still kind of annoys me a little bit, quite What's honestly, that? cup holders. It doesn't? It doesn't have a single cup holder. Are you serious? Yeah. Hold on, hold on. I gotta take you 
Oh, my God. That's the one thing it doesn't have. It's no got, cup holders. No, no cup holders. You're right. A, I don't know why they did that, but that's just one thing that kind of gets me a little annoying. You're now. right. Yeah. Now I got to go back and look at all cars that was like from the 80s and, yeah. and back and see if they got right. cup holders. That's crazy. That's yeah. an oversight. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll go around and stay over there. I'll, I'll show you the stuff I actually did in the interior. Yeah, let's see. So, um, we'll start with, let me see. We'll start with the roof first. So, over the years, the roof actually deteriorated, right, just from time. Mm -hmm. And this is actually something that we chose to put in when we fixed up the car originally. The uh, headliner here. So this is all new. This is new? Right. You this did this yourself? I didn't do this one myself. I was about to no, say, you a jack of all trades, <laughs> man. Goodness. No, not that one. Okay. Um, but that was something that had to be done just because, like, you would be in the car and stuff would be falling down on you, all the little foam pieces. Yeah, and you yeah. Can't, you can't drive like that. Right. Um, but all the carpets are original, right? Nice. Um, oh, and I'll show you the trunk, too. Okay. Um, but all of this is original. Oh, actually... This is cool. That's These different. seats are like, they're power what seats from what? 1985. They go up, down, side to side. Power? Yeah. 85? Yeah. They go rear tilt and then you got front <laughs> tilt. They're like different. ultimately adjustable. Yeah. This and is top of the line This then, one's right? got power mirrors in here too. Wow. You can adjust the mirrors like that. It's got power windows, right? I like how they got it in the middle console yeah, like that. That's different. different. Yep. And now when I drive another car, I'll be reaching for putting the window up. In the middle? And then I'll go, I'll go, what? And, I, <laughs> and there'll not be nothing there. here, you know? So, it's not there. Yeah. And this is the, the ashtray. They used to have one right here. Oh, you know, you, you take that out, you light your, your cigarette. Lighting. Put that right in there. You got your ashtray in here. Nostalgic. From 1985. Nostalgic. Yeah, and my dad never smoked in the car, which is probably a good thing, because then yeah. it would have probably deteriorate even more. Right. Um, you um, got the radio? Yeah, I, this is the only thing that's, you know, very noticeable in the car that I've done. Yeah. Um, is the radio. And I know I was getting into the sound system a little bit. Uh-huh. But this is just a, a radio my uncle actually bought for me. Nice. And... It's like something you'd find at Best Buy, but it's got Bluetooth, it's got FM, AM, right? Really? You can go Spotify, Pandora. In the 85. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be rolling down the street with my tunes from my phone, you know? That's crazy. It's got a power antenna as well, you know? Nice. But in here, I don't know if you can get that angle. Um, I come in on that side. It's got a power antenna. You just flick that switch, the antenna will go up. What? Um, it's got a digital clock. It's got, when the car's on, you see that the... the AC temperature is on here. It's all labeled. LCD screen. Yeah. Now look at the gas pedal. I'm looking at the gas pedal right now. Mm -hmm. Is that like a blue light? Yeah. That's another thing I've done inside. Is um all the lighting has been switched over to LED blues. Um, That's so at dope. night it's when it really shines. That's um, dope. the whole interior is kind of has a blue light in it. Nice. And it looks real nice. You did your thing. Yeah. Yeah. You did your thing with this. Mm-hmm. Sheesh. Um, and you said you did the trunk. What'd you do to the trunk? So, I haven't done anything in the trunk, but I'll, I'll show you it. This could be a good thing. This is probably some of my uh, classic car enthusiasts are going to preach, uh -huh. appreciate. It's a um, big trunk. Yeah, so I call this a, a body snatching trunk. Because <laughs> you throw somebody in here. A whole you know. adult could lay right. in there. So, That's crazy. This actually is a mat that came with the car from the factory. Uh -huh. and it, this is the 30th anniversary what? edition mat. So this is something no that's probably worth more than most of this car put together. No way. Yeah. And I, I, I took that with me today to just show you that. Yes, that's I don't, huge. I don't carry this around with me because I don't want that getting ruined. Yeah, please don't ruin that. Yeah. You might have to keep that for your son and your yeah. son's son. That's what I saw. You know how much that's going to be worth? Yeah. But Goodness. That's, that's, that's the most unique thing probably about this car. Facts. You know, even factoring in, you know, everything I've done to it, the paint, everything. That mat. That mat right there is probably one of the most Jeez. rare things in the whole car. Zoom in one more time on that. Anniversary edition. 30th. Mm -hmm. Right. That's huge. 85, guys. Damn. And then you got some other features. I got my vacuum in there. That's, cause that's something that looks like it would came with the car too, right? The car vac, huh? Exactly. That's a 1985 that's a, that's a too. 1985 yeah. car 
<laughs> I Yo, keep that in there for personality. You know? Personality. Um, and then this trunk, like I try to keep it clean as possible, but you know, under this flap here, I keep my tools that I need to do some uh, little repairs on the road sometimes. Cause you know, the car is nice, but it's still from 1985. So exactly. it has some hiccups in it. Exactly. Um, all this cardboard here for me to lay on when I got to fix something. See that? You know, this guy, this green, guy, you know? yo, he he really gets his hands dirty. Yeah. He keeps the cardboard in the trunk just in case you gotta get his, you know yeah. what I mean? Get his this, back a little bit it's uncomfortable and slide under That's there right. and make something work. Okay. Yo, Angelo gotta get props, man. You gotta get props. That's, for real. That's that's huge, bro. Now we looked in the trunk. We talked about radio, so we kind of touched on audio. Yeah. Um. Did you do anything specifically besides the new audio, besides the new rig head units? Well, actually, before I even had the car painted, uh -huh. so probably the first project I did with the car, period, was I did the speakers and the radio. Okay. I rewired everything. So there's two speakers in the back here I did, and you got a speaker in the door, a speaker on the dash. And you um, did that? On each side, yeah. So they're all new. Got it. God does everything, yo. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was teaching myself how to do all the wiring as I was Jeez, doing it too. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. Damn. But again, if I had a hat, guys, <laughs> I would totally tip my hat Appreciate off, bro. You, you, you definitely. Yeah. It's impressive, man. Impressive. Yeah. Now let's talk performance. Okay. Now you're What's talking my language. On? Now I'm talking your language. That's really what I care about. What's going on performance wise? All right. So. Pop the hood first or tell you about it first? Which um, one is it? Yeah, pop the hood so when you're talking about it, they can actually see what you refer. Good point. Yeah. So, say, from factory, this car had a 5.0 302 V8 in it. V8, right? okay. From 1985. So, since then, <laughs> I have uh, done a little bit of modification. Hey. Right. See, it wasn't like this last time. No, a little bit different. A little different. A little different. Clean. Yeah. What's going on? What are we looking at? So you're looking at a 5.0302, mm. and um, I've actually gone done the whole exhaust system, Oof. right? So right now we're rolling with um, long tube headers. Okay. Um, and to my knowledge, this is the only car, only Thunderbird with long tube headers on it, mm. um, just because. These are not actually made for this car. I had to go online and buy them for a Mustang. Really? And the Mustangs had some intricacies that were different in them. Okay. So my coworker and I, again, we actually had to go in and weld in new transmission linkage. Crazy. So that everything would fit right. Crazy. Um, so again, that's something that's unique about the car. And that was actually the first performance mod I did was the exhaust system. Really? Yeah. And that's long tube headers. Um, I think they're one and three quarter okay. um, tubing right there out of the exhaust chamber nice and then they go at they go down into a two and a half inch collector okay and then it's a um x pipe right mm -hmm. and then it goes into two flowmaster 40 series mufflers now we're gonna have to hit them the flow yeah. before this is over uh, patience though patience, <laughs> tell them. patience yeah. and, and then i got the flow master is dumped right before the axle, so that's why it has a real deep kind of drone to it. So I don't have tailpipes out the back because that really kind of condenses the sound, so you okay. don't get as much of a, a, a drone heavy, to it. Yeah. But I want a little more like you know, you're you at a stoplight and everybody around you feels the car. Feels moving. that. Feels yeah. that vibration. And that's why you feel that when the car starts up. Really. Um, but in terms of the engine bay now, so I did new ignition system. Mm -hmm. um actually we'll go all the way back i put a new computer in the car really yeah so from factory this car was fuel injected right um but if you know anything about 1985 fuel injection wasn't all that good mm -hmm. so there'd be times i'd be it'd be cold out you know it'd be the car would be hot whatever it is and i go to start it and it either wouldn't start without a little persuasion or you know it would crank for persuasion. 30 seconds you right know? right um and I was tired of it. So I, I went online, I was looking at all these new fuel injection systems and I settled on the one I'll show you in a minute. Okay. Um, but to do all that, I had to put a new computer in the car. Okay. So I took out all the old wiring harness. Jeez, uh, I nice. took out the old distributor, the old ignition coil, old throttle body, Jeez. all the exhaust gas, recirculation stuff I put in it from the factory to try to keep the emissions down. All of that's gone. Um, uh, uh, uh. And 
you know, from 1985, they were very concerned about emissions. Right. But the way they would do that was not efficient. Um, so some of that stuff, it was all like full of tubing and full of like air Look tubes. Yeah. Yep. And poor. like, if you looked in there before I took all that out, you wouldn't even be able to see the headers down there because it was all clogged up with emissions mm. tubing. Um, and since it's 1985, I'm not checked for emissions anymore. Oh, you don't got to worry so about that. So I don't that. have to worry about emissions. Nice. So I was like, uh-uh, I'm taking all that out. <laughs> so I went, that was one of the first things I did too when I did the exhaust. I did the emission stuff, took that right out. Goodness. Um, and when I did this, I did new ignition coil. That's like a high-performance ignition coil for the classic cars. Nice. On the sidewall right here. Check that out. And come on this angle right there. Uh -huh. um, these are Blackjack Pro Series spark plug wires from Aces Fuel Injection. They got uh, ceramic boots. Uh -huh. So these are ceramic for the uh, for the heat prevention from the headers because ah, the heat the heat will eat cool. away at the plugs. Right? right. So the ceramic plugs help help with that. Um, this is a distributor with like a high output, um, and all my ignition timings and controlled by the computer too. Um, so that's something that wasn't as refined. From the factory, right. right? So this system's a lot smarter than the one from 1985. Um, and you'll notice this AC doesn't have a belt on it right now, and that's primarily, well, a couple reasons. Uh -huh. You get more power when you're not really? running a belt over here because it's got less stuff to pull on. Uh -huh. And then also, I'm kind of fine-tuning the AC myself. So you know, like the channel says, I'm a regular guy. You're a regular guy. Not everything's working on the car, so the AC, <laughs> the AC is a work in progress. Is a work in um, progress, yeah. guys. So soon up and coming, right? Soon up and future plans, yeah. AC yeah. belt. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So other than that, I'll go and I'll pop the air cleaner off. Because, right. um, look at this. I did a new air cleaner, but I really want something to eat that. This is the uh, oh. fuel injection system that I'm using. Oh. This is called the Hill Shot system. So it's a four barrel, what looks like a carburetor. Right. But it's not. That's oh, what a lot of guys say. Think. They I go, oh, it was, it was a carburetor. carburetor. They go, oh, it was a carburetor at a meet. And I'll go, nah, fuel injected. Uh. And they go, what? You know, and I got to pop the air cleaner off and I show them. Because you see the wiring harness running into that. Right? Mm -hmm. So everything that comes out of that um, throttle body is all done by the computer, right? Okay. Yeah. So it's probably better on gas, right? Um, it's smarter. You get power like that, right? The second you tap on it, so oh, it zips yeah. around, you know? Um, and I got wow. some AN line running um, to this throttle body, kind of makes the engine bay look nice. Okay. Right? It goes to a fuel pressure regulator right there on the firewall. Sheesh. I mean, on the um, see that. fender. And all, of, all this stuff was stuff I put in as well. Boy. I had to kind of learn what I was doing. You did a lot. Yep. Sheesh. Since you did so much, let me ask you, uh -huh. what, what would you say was your most expensive mod? Most expensive. And you don't have to name numbers because that might actually hurt to repeat yeah. that number. Yeah. However. I don't want to discourage anybody too. Cause <laughs> exactly. What, what happens usually in my experience working on stuff like this is uh -huh. you'll decide to buy a new item or you'll say like, I want to start this project with the car, you know, and then you'll get into it and you'll realize, oh snap, I need this, this, and this, mm -hmm. you know, to either fix it or something broke or you got to, you know, modify it, get a different part. Yeah. And then your budget starts going and exceeding what you thought was what it was going to be. Um, and not to say that, you know, everything's going to go exactly as planned, mm -hmm. but that can be a little discouraging sometimes. That's true. You know, That's um, true. and I have to say that the newest fuel injection system I put on, that throttle body right there, mm -hmm. that in its entirety, the whole project I did, because I did ignition, I did fuel, right? I did a new fuel pump in the tank too. Mm -hmm. So all that stuff kind of adds up and that was probably my most expensive okay. project. Just because the, the sheer amount of parts I had to replace to do it. Sheesh, yeah, know? for sure. But I got for a new, sure. I say I, I got a new brain in the car now too. You definitely you got a, a new brain, man. Oh, I, I didn't mention I got, I put a, new intake manifold on as well you can come on this side and you can see it a lot better um this is a, a weigh-in intake manifold and they call it a street warrior street warrior yeah you can see right there is the name mm. street warrior um 
and that's a dual plane intake manifold so it's not a high rise or single plane okay like most performance engines have because okay. once you go single plane those kind of have the high runners that mm -hmm. go straight up and then you got to worry about hood clearance hood clearance right and that's not something i want to deal with right now right because you know i would have but you know that's where you get into trouble because you know you go for the the best most performance oriented part and then you got to replace your hood gotta replace and that's it. not something i wanted to get into that's um, and then also something a benefit about that is you get more torque low end when mm -hmm. you got the shorter intake runners um, and also you keep your car stock looking which is great because it still looks like Thunderbird from 85. 85. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Thunderbird from 85, let me ask you because you did so much in that show. How long were you working on this car? Like mm -hmm. from when you from when your mom said okay we're gonna get it running for you. Mm -hmm. Anything else besides that is on you. Yeah. You said, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I know what I, I see where I want to go with this. Yeah. How long has it been since you did that first mod to where it's at now? I got one now. I probably started really getting my hands in there when I was 18. Okay. Um, Because when I was 17 up to 18, I was, you know, taking spark plugs out. I was kind of checking things out that I could do without breaking something. Right, right. Because right, right. I didn't know what I was doing at that point. Right. So I was like, I got to get in there. You know, I can't have the bending sitting here and not touch it. Right. Um, so I was doing all these things, you know, replacing um, vacuum hoses, just everything that I could do without getting more knowledgeable. Yeah. And then I figured out, you know, maybe it's time to do something because I wanted the car to sound nice with the exhaust. And mm -hmm. I was like, let me just get my hands in there, you know. Um, so probably 18 years old is when I really started doing stuff yeah you did it so, so, in, so that's got to be a short two years, years yeah you got real busy oh yeah you that's got right. real that's busy right. in the last two years yeah is this your daily do you ride this every day so, around town this thing really loves like the fall when it's nice and crisp outside mm -hmm. um because it doesn't like the winter when there's salt on the roads or when it's slippery because it's real wheel drive ah. and you know it may not look like it but the car is actually really light it weighs like 3100 pounds Really? Yeah. And, you know, if you take a Charger, they weigh upwards of 4,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. right? So that's another thing. Like, guys, actually, they turn cars like these into drag racing cars because they're real light and you can put a huge motor in them. That's crazy. Right? So that's, what, that's one thing that I don't have going for me. If I want to, you know, not saying I would, but if I want to, <laughs> you know, they're going to be looking at me like, oh, you got a little motor in there, and it gets up and goes. So it's you know, it only weighs 3,000 pounds. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, that's crazy. Now, I know you did a lot, right? Mm -hmm. But I also want to ask you, future plans. Yeah. Any more things got you got thinking that you're thinking about? So, one thing about this car that I like, but could be better, mm -hmm. is the exhaust. Because right now, I just told you I put in all that new exhaust. Mm -hmm. um, but the X pipe I put in has catalytic converters in it. Okay. And I don't need them, right? I put those in there because it came with it. Okay. But I don't need them in there. So what I'm thinking about doing. Is getting those electronic exhaust cutouts and putting them in there so that when I want to flick a switch and I'm running open headers mm. right? so I'll be cruising around I got my mufflers going and then I flick a switch and then all of a sudden it sounds like I'm ready to drag race right? <laughs> Hit the button so that's something it. I want to do and then um, in the future I'm gonna be doing the, the heads on this car too okay these are the stock heads Everything around that has been done, right? It's got an intake manifold. Oh, I put a cam in. I didn't mention the camshaft Ooh, I did. Put a camshaft. Um, but the, the, the heads are the main thing that's really restricting my power right now. Okay. Because the ones from 85, they don't flow air through them very well. Okay. Um, and they did that on purpose so that the car wouldn't make as many emissions because they were very concerned about emissions uh. back in the day. Um, so it sounds good, but it doesn't make as much power as it sounds it would. Right. So you just brought up two things then. Mm -hmm. two, two little things you said. It's gonna bring me to two questions. Mm -hmm. Number one, you spoke about headers, mm -hmm. which triggered me to think about headaches. Mm. Did you encounter any? Oh. <laughs> that, my, that head hurts. Right. my head hurts just thinking just about, thinking about, about the headaches. Oh. Wow. I, okay. Yeah. So I, you stumbled a few times so putting this together. I told you that the headers I bought for this car weren't actually made for this particular car. Yes. They were made for the same engine, but not the same car. Mm -hmm. Um, so getting them in there was a whole project. I had the engine mm. jacked up. I had the car jacked up. The engine was jacked up beyond that. Sheesh. I had to slip them in 
and I was like hitting everything on my way into. Sheesh. And then I had to go in and buy a new steering shaft because that wouldn't fit anymore. Sheesh. But this is actually brand new. The steering shaft in there, you can see. Mm -hmm. Um, goes down to the uh, steering rack. That's brand new because I, I couldn't use the old one because it wouldn't clear the headers. Oh my god! So that was like what I'm talking about. Projects just add up, right? Sheesh. And then I told you, me and my coworker, we rolled it. We welded a uh, a new bracket for the transmission linkage together because right. the old one wouldn't work properly. Right. So you know the car sounded great, but I couldn't go nowhere because the transmission <laughs> the wasn't working. Transmission wasn't working. Um, oh my gosh. So that was a whole headache right there. Sheesh. Um, but once it was done, boy, it felt good. It was you worth know? it. And then with the new project with fuel injection, mm -hmm. this computer has to be kind of tuned. Okay. And the car runs, they get to run okay, mm -hmm. but it doesn't run like I want it to. So actually I'm talking to a guy on Facebook and he's going to teach me to tune cars and everything. Really? Yeah, so I'll be able to get it working much better. Hey, um, yeah. And that's been a headache too, getting it working to the point where you can use it like every day. Right. Because you asked if it was a daily driver. Right. And right now I haven't been, been able to do that just because I'm fine tuning. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't want to have somebody in the car and then something happens, right? Facts. You don't want that. You got to pull out the cardboard yeah. that's in the yeah. trunk. <laughs> <laughs> and I have Jeez. too. And I have too. I'm sure you have, man. I wouldn't. Yeah. I definitely don't doubt that. I don't doubt it. I know you would do it in a second. Like, hold on, I got this. Let me grab my cardboard. Give me 20 minutes. Yeah, man. I had a fix. <laughs> you back on the road. Again. My hands will be a little dirty, but the car will work. We moving. We yeah. moving in 20 minutes. That's Just give it. me a minute. Yeah. That's crazy. Now, the other thing you mentioned mm -hmm. that made that triggered me again was you was talking about exhaust. Mm -hmm. Can I bless the people mm -hmm. and let them hear how they say things? Thunderbird, guys, this is the 85. Restored slash modded. I might want to come around this way too. Come to the back. <laughs> For some change, mm -hmm. easy with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two swipes is gone, man. Angela, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you. This is the part where I gotta ask you again. Okay. You want to shout out anybody that motivated you, inspired you, helped you along the way with this build right here? I mean, I gotta look at 
everybody on there's like these YouTube channels where they keep telling you, you know you can get your hands in there get dirty yeah. do it right they're kind of teaching you how to do these things yeah. right and I, I've got you get in the comments there's real communities on YouTube right where you mm -hmm. find a car like this and you can kind of play with it right um, I gotta thank my mom of course for you know putting in the money to get this thing running right um, thank my dad for buying it back in yes. 85 right yes. um, definitely thank God for giving me that wisdom and surrounding me with people who helped me mm -hmm. actually develop the skills to, to work on this car and to get it working. Uh, I've got to thank my coworker. He just rolled out in that Firebird. I think. Yeah, that. guys, y'all caught a glimpse of that thing. Yeah. Um, I got to thank him because he's the one who helps me with the welding. He helps me with the stuff I don't know. He's been playing with engines for his whole life too. Facts. Um, and you know everybody along the way, everybody that meets who compliments the car, right? Just mm -hmm. encourages you to keep going. So, Definitely. That's it. Guys, I told y'all. I told you I could not disappoint, man. Mm. Every Friday, y'all need to tap in. It's regular guys mm. that eat regular cars on YouTube. I can't disappoint, man. This is another banger. Again, it is what it is. I mean, I'm speechless myself. But anyway, regular guys that eat regular cars on Instagram. Make sure y'all follow me. When y'all follow me on Instagram, what's going to happen? You're going to get a preview of like two to three weeks out in advance of what's going to drop on YouTube. Mm. So if you follow me on Instagram, you already know what's going to be seen on YouTube. So tap into that as well. And then the last thing is regular guys that irregular cars are on TikTok. When you follow me on TikTok, you're going to see these same cars from the episodes. But we're going to flip it and bounce it with music. We're going to have some rolling shots in there. So make sure y'all tap into the TikTok channel. Like I always say, guys, love y'all. Peace.